What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about 90% junk constitutional silver and how to break a troy ounce with silver quarters, dimes, and half dollars. But really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. And if you want to help support the channel by getting some DYDSS merchandise, of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, and many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today I wanted to talk about some 90% silver. It's been a little while since I've talked about silver dimes, quarters, half dollars. I haven't talked about the 90% junk constitutional coins in several, several weeks. So I figured something different to talk about today. So sitting here in front of me, I have not a whole lot. I have a couple bags of miscellaneous junk silver coins, but out here in the front, the front line right here, an ounce of silver, an ounce of silver, and an ounce of silver. That's right. One ounce, silver half dollars, an ounce of silver quarters, and an ounce of silver dimes. We'll get into that momentarily. But the reason I wanted to bring these out today is because I wanted to talk about how to make change for an ounce of silver or how to break an ounce of silver. Now, a lot of people seem to believe that we're going to get to a point where we're actually using silver and gold for any and all purchases at any and all stores on any and all occasions barter and trading and it's going kind of backwards i in no way shape or form do i believe that is ever going to be the case but you could absolutely trade with people if you find someone who is willing to accept your silver and or gold with that being said i was thinking about it and very simplistic, overly simplified example I can give is what were to happen if you wanted to charge someone a third of an ounce of silver, but all they had was one ounce of silver. They got a one ounce, one troy ounce, American Silver Eagle, but you're charging them a third of an ounce of silver. What do you expect them to do? Go home, melt it down, split it, and bring it back? Probably not. That's probably not going to work. Probably not going to be the case. But if they hand this over to you, and you have three silver half dollars, since you were charging them one to begin with, you can hand them back two of these. All you're doing is making change. For lack of better verbiage, for lack of better terminology, I thought I would explain it in a way that makes the most sense to people. Once again, overly simplified. Same goes for the silver quarters. Same go for the silver dimes. All it takes is a little bit of math. Basic math. Adding and subtracting. Nothing crazy, no long division, no algebra, none of that nonsense that they told us that we're going to need in real life. None of that. And for those of you who tuned into yesterday's video, more specifically those of you who tuned into yesterday's video while the live premiere was going on, we were actually talking a little bit in the live chat about junk silver, about that 90%, and we were comparing these coins right here to Morgan dollars and peace dollars, which are a little bit different in terms of weight, so they don't necessarily go the way these go when it comes to three half dollars or six silver quarters or 14 silver dimes. I'll, by the way, over here, these are mostly mercury dimes and two Roosevelt dimes at the bottom. I believe you can see that. Some of these are actually very worn down. Some of them are not, but I've always thought that the Mercury Dime was always a really cool coin. And as I've said in previous videos of the past, 
All of these coins sitting here in front of me, every last one of them, whether it's the Kennedy halves or the Walking Liberty halves or the Washington quarters or the Standing Liberty quarters or the Roosevelt dimes or the Mercury dimes, whatever, the 90% silver coins, I've been saying this for a really long time now. These are fractional silver coins. They ain't rounds, they ain't bars. Fractional silver rounds and bars carry a ridiculously high premium. Generally speaking, not just because of all this craziness going on in the world right now. Everyone knows that premiums are high on everything at the moment. But in general, silver bars and rounds on a fractional level, for whatever reason, carry a very high premium. I personally do not understand why they are not nearly as recognizable as a coin would be. But hey, supply and demand. There's not, not a lot of ways of getting fractional silver. That's actually the only way of getting fractional pure silver. This is not pure silver, obviously. It's only 90% made up of silver, but still. Like I said, all it takes is a little bit of math, a little bit of adding and subtracting, nothing crazy. If you can count to 14, you can figure out 90% junk constitutional silver. That's all you need. You either got to count up to 14, up to 6, or up to 3. If you can do that, you can do this. So, that being said, as for fractional silver coins, fractional silver US coins, by the way, which are even more trustworthy, this right here, let me get it in focus. This is obviously a mercury dime, or you can call it what I like to call it, a 1 14th of an ounce silver coin with face value, minted by a sovereign government. Trusted and respected everywhere. A 1 14th of an ounce silver coin. Same go for the Roosevelt Dimes. 1948. Real, true, honest money. Worldwide recognized money constitutionally recognized money biblically recognized money so as for quarters this is a one-sixth of an ounce silver coin similar to my equation my mathematic equation before if you're charging someone a third of an ounce of silver and all they have is a one troy ounce silver coin, but you got six silver quarters, keep the two, because that's what they owed you, and give them the four. You just gave them back two thirds of an ounce of silver. Because these quarters are, after all, one-sixth of an ounce of silver each, approximately. We're working with fractions and decimals, so it's not 100% exact, but it's very, 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 very close. If you do a little bit of reading, or if you watch a variety of different videos, just about a dollar and 40 cents, face value that is, equates to a troy ounce of silver which is how we came to 14 silver dimes. Add these up, face value-wise. What is this? It's $1.40. Or you can add it up silver-wise, and what is it? Just about a troy ounce of silver. Same go for the quarters, except you can't get to $1.40 with quarters, but you get to $1.50 or approximately, roughly, just about a troy ounce of silver. And last but not least, same goes for the half dollars as well. Add them up face value wise, what is it, $1.50? Because once again, you can't get to $1.40 with half dollars. You get to $1.50, AKA, just about approximately, roughly, a troy ounce of silver. 
speaking of the half dollar, similar to how the dime is what I like to refer to as a 1 14th of an ounce silver coin or how the quarter is a 1 6th of an ounce silver coin, this right here is 1 3rd of an ounce. So, in terms of fractional silver, I understand it is a little bit weird. One third of an ounce, one sixth of an ounce, and one fourteenth of an ounce. Typically, we're used to half ounce, quarter ounce, and tenth of an ounce. But, like I said, if you can add and subtract up to 14, you're good. So one last thing that I want to talk about in reference to 90% junk constitutional silver is the fact that by face value, they have quite a few different types of value. You can go by face value, which is what the cashier at the store would go by. If I handed this to the cashier at the store, do you think he or she is going to see this as a third of an ounce of silver? Do you think he or she is going to see this for being worth quite a few bucks? No. They're going to say half dollar, as it says right there at the bottom, half dollar, 50 cents. And you could be like, yeah, but it's a 1964, therefore it's not 50 cents. No, nope, it's 50 cents. In a store, to a cashier, at a register, this is only 50 cents. But in a coin shop, it's a couple bucks. It's one third of an ounce of silver. What is silver right now? Just under the $18 mark? According to the spot price, each one of these is worth close to six bucks. Interesting way of looking at it. It's like a whole different world. And during the live premiere chat that was going on when I posted yesterday's video, I was mentioning that that's the reason I never really got too into 90% junk constitutional silver. I was never that big of a fan of it. Truth be told, I'm still not. I respect it as a form of diversification. I appreciate the fact that it gives me a chance to break an ounce or make change for an ounce. I think it's pretty interesting how I have fractional U.S. silver coins... But I was never a big fan of the fact that they aren't pure silver. When it comes to that 90%, when it comes to that 3 nines fine or that 4 nines fine, I just like the pure silver. That's just my preference at the end of the day. There's no real difference other than this level of purity at least. But there's not a big difference between this right here and 3 of these, 6 of these, or 14 of these. They're both, or all, roughly a troy ounce of silver. And by the way, it's not just 90% silver. It's not just three nines fine silver. It's not just four nines fine silver. Don't oh, forget, we also have 40% silver, which I'm not gonna get too big into in today's video. I'm not a fan of 40% silver really at all, but this right here is an example of one. It's a 1967. For those of you who do not know, anything pre-65, is 90% silver. This right here is a 67. Therefore, it's 40% silver. So we're not going to get into 40% today. Probably not going to get into 40% silver much at all, even in future videos. I don't talk a whole lot about 40%. I don't even know a whole lot about 40%. I kind of stare clear of it. I do like the 90%. I'm just not the biggest fan. I like it, I respect it, I appreciate it. But when it comes to pure silver, that's what I can say I love. I like 90%, but I love three nines and four nines fine. Personal preference, no big deal. I know people on both sides of the spectrum. I know people who avoid pure silver altogether and they only stack the 90%. I know people on the other side too. They avoid this stuff. They say, no, it's called junk silver for a reason. It's junk, it's garbage, blah, blah, blah. Only stack pure silver. I stack both. 
Want to know why? Because I'm a big believer in diversification. As I've said in other videos where I was referencing other types of metal or other types of maybe not so much money, but let's just say currency or investments or whatever, I've said it a million times and I'll say it again in today's video. I am a huge believer in silver, huge, massive believer in silver, but you want to know what I'm an even bigger believer in? Diversification. Diversification when it comes to silver and diversification when it comes to other types of money, currency, fiat, whatever you want to call it. So those are just some of my thoughts and those are some of my ways, some tactics, some methods of quote unquote breaking an ounce, making change for an ounce. I'm curious due to the fact that nothing on my channel is financial advice. I am in no way, shape or form a financial advisor. It's not my job to give people financial advice. I'm not allowed to. Nothing on my channel is financial advice. It's all for entertainment purposes only, but it's to initiate a conversation as well. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts? When it comes to that 90% junk constitutional silver, the stuff that I have sitting here in front of me, the standing Liberty quarters. You know what? Let me take some of these out. Pretty sure that's the only coin that I didn't really show off in today's video. Only have four of these. Truth be told, I did not even know that these existed. I was scrolling around on eBay one day, probably the middle of last year, middle of 2019, and I stumbled upon these. I said, huh, Standing Liberty Quarters. Never heard of those before. Did a quick little Google search, then a YouTube search, then I read an article or two, then I asked, someone else that stacked silver or had been stacking silver for longer than I did a little bit of research, which is what you're supposed to do before you move your money or your currency around. Don't just go and get silver because oh, the DYDSS guy made a video about it. Nope. That's not what my videos are for. My videos are for conversations. But anyway, I stumbled upon these on eBay, did a little bit of research, Figured I like what I saw, something that I wanted to get, so I picked up $1 face value of Standing Liberty Quarters. Now they're pretty worn down, but they are 90% silver. We also have some Walking Liberty half dollars, which I also did not show off. Now there's Franklin halves as well, except I just don't have any on me. I have some in my safe, but I didn't bring them out because I didn't want to show off all the junk silver. I just mostly wanted to talk about breaking an ounce, but very similar to, or at least this, this, this side, very similar, virtually identical, same design. This is the Walking Liberty design. This is the Walking Liberty half dollar with, of course, a beautiful eagle on this side. United States of America. These are some of the coins of my country. As I always say, I am fortunate and blessed and lucky enough to be an American. And it just so happens that American coins, whether they are 90%, whether they are three nines, they're my favorite coins to stack. Once again, I'm curious, everybody watching right now, what are your thoughts? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to your opinion on 90% junk constitutional silver. Do you stack it? Do you avoid it? Do you stack a little bit, kind of like the way I do, or is it what you stack for the most part? Is this right here the foundation of your stack, that 90%, or is it pure silver, like me? Or did you make it 19 and a half minutes into a silver video and you're just gonna sit there and be like, I hate silver. Even though you're watching silver videos for reasons I will never understand. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to subscribe. New videos every single day, 365 days a year. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 1000 subscribers, so Help us out. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed 
t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, such as the three brand new designs, three nines, four nines, and 90% t-shirts and hoodies available in black, white, gray, red, blue, and pink. And of course, we have a ton of other products as well, t-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, and many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the DYDSS Military Tee, available in four different colors, and it's helping us raise funds and awareness for Military with PTSD, Inc., a nonprofit actively working to help improve the lives of our veterans. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And once again, please head on down to the comments and let me know what are your thoughts when it comes to that 90% junk constitutional silver. Do you have quite a bit of it? Do you avoid it? Is it your favorite thing to stack? Do you not like stacking it, but you stack it anyway for diversification purposes? Or is it the foundation of your stack or anything and everything related to that 90%? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.